everyone. We're pleased to be back. And here's Ozenis for today. Still with me, Vanessa. China calls ASEAN's member for building South China Sea into Sea of Peace Friendship Cooperation. Chinese President Xi Jinping called on Brunei and other members of ASEAN to work together to build the South China Sea into a sea of peace, friendship and cooperation. Chinese is ready to work with Brunei and all other ASEAN member states to actively advance maritime cooperation and the consultation of the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea during meeting with Sultan Hassan al bolkiah of Brunei Darussalam on the sidelines of the 29th Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC Economics Leader Meeting. China appreciates Brunei's active efforts to advance China-ASEAN relations during its ASEAN chairmanship and it stands ready to further enhance communication and coordination with Brunei within frameworks like ASEAN and APEC. Meanwhile, Sultan Hassan al bolkiah once again congratulated Xi on the success of the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China and on his selection as the Secretary General of the Central Committee of the CPC. On Brunei-China relations, the two countries enjoy friendly relations and fruitful cooperation. Brunei is grateful for China's donation of COVID-19 vaccines and thanks China for giving strong support to Brunei as ASEAN chair. He pledged that Brunei will continue to play an active role in enhancing ASEAN's comprehensive strategic partnership with China. Myanmar military regime says no political bargaining for a list of foreign prisoners. Myanmar's ruling military state did not engage in political bargaining with other countries before releasing four foreign prisoners among nearly 6,000 in an amnesty. We have not had any political bargaining with foreign countries to release the foreigners. It was not necessary. They were arrested for criminal offenses. We didn't detain them to bargain politically. Junta spokesman Zhou Mintun was speaking at a regular briefing a day after Australian economist Sean Turnell, former British ambassador Vicky Bowman, Japanese filmmaker Toru Kubota, and US citizen Kia Hitao were released. Sean Turnell lands in Melbourne after being released from detention by the Myanmar military. Australian economist Sean Turnell, a former advisor to the post Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi, landed in Melbourne a day after being released from detention by the South Asian Nations Military Junta in a mass amnesty. Professor Sean Turnell is on a plane home and will land in Melbourne this morning. Uh, his return will be an enormous relief. Uh, to his wife Havu and to all of his friends and supporters here in Australia and overseas. Uh, his wife issued a statement this morning via my department and I'll read it for you now. I'm overwhelmed with joy at the news that my beloved husband Sean is coming home. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all those who have strongly advocated for and assisted to secure his release. I especially thank the Australian Government, in particular the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Foreign Minister and her office, the Embassy in Yangon for their persistent efforts and support. After nearly 22 months apart, our priority right now is to spend time together as a family and we ask that the media respect our privacy during this very special time. Almost 6,000 prisoners, including Turnell, were released to mark Myanmar's National Day. Others released included a former British ambassador, a Japanese filmmaker and a United States citizen. To release uh, a cohort of prisoners. Uh, Turnell was arrested a few days after the army seized power from Suchi's elected government in February last year, ending a decade of tentative democracy. In September, he was sentenced to three years in prison for violating the Official Secrets Act and immigration law charges he denied. Malaysians confused after inclusive election leave first hung parliament.
Voters in Malaysia state they were left confused after an inconclusive election resulted in the country's first hung parliament, prompting political parties to shuffle at the last minute to create new alliances to form the next government. Weeding Yashin, a former prime minister and rival opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim, were vying for support from potential coalition partners to meet a deadline set by King after the election results. He lost out. Anwar's multi-ethnic Pakatan Harapan coalition won 82 seats, while Weeding's conservative Malay Muslim Perikata National Alliance took 73 seats. It then secured support from two smaller political blocs, giving it control of 101 seats, but still short of the 112 needed for a majority. I think from what we learned here is that the country is more divided. I think uh, rural Malay... One Malaysian voter said he wished Anwar's PH coalition would remain a strong opposition in parliament, while another said the political instability meant everything was up in the air. Kamala Harris visit Philippines to restore ties between the two countries. The United States Vice President Kamala Harris arrives in the Philippines for talks aimed at reviving ties with the former United States colony, an Asian ally that is central to United States' efforts to countries China's increasingly assertive policies towards Taiwan. Harris said she had told Chinese President Xi Jinping, whom she met at the APEC summit in Thailand, that Washington did not see confrontation with China. The leaders are expected to discuss both Taiwan and South China Sea, as well as share notes on Marcos' meeting with Xi and Biden's with the Chinese leader. Washington is investing millions to help modernize the Philippine military, but the country has not committed to supporting any United States intervention in a conflict over Taiwan. Thailand hands over APEC chairmanship to United States. Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha handed over the chair of Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC to United States Vice President Kamala Harris in a ceremony signaling the forum's end for this year. <laughs> Thailand is ready to seamlessly cooperate with the U.S. in driving the work with APEC going forward, and I'm confident that the mission that Thailand has started, especially in the promotion of inclusive and sustainable growth in the region, I believe that under chairman of the U.S., APEC will be in good hands. I wish you all the success in starting your chairmanship in 2023. The APEC leader said in a declaration that the 21-member bloc will uphold and further strengthen a rule-based multilateral trading system. Harry said the United States city of San Francisco will host the leaders' meeting of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum next year. At least 100 more people died after an earthquake in West Java, Indonesia. A 5.6 magnitude earthquake killed more than 160 people and injured hundreds in Indonesia West Java province, with rescuers trying to reach survivors trapped under the rubble amid a series of aftershocks. Uh, the epicenter was near the town of Cianjur in mountainous West Java, about 75 km southeast of the capital Jakarta. The region is home to over 2.5 million people residents. Herman Suherman, head of Cianjur's government, said that 162 people had been killed.
Indonesia's Disaster Mitigation Agency still placed the death toll at 62 and rescuers were searching for 25 suspected to be trapped under rubbles. BNPB said more than 2,200 houses has been damaged and more than 5,300 people had been displaced. Electricity was down and disrupting communications efforts. As well in Cianjur, residents huddled together on mats in open fields or in tents while buildings around them had been reduced almost entirely to rubble. United States Secretary of Defense visits Indonesia to discuss China and final phase of F-15 jet purchase. The Indonesian Defense Minister said his country was committed to its policy of non-alignment with both China and the United States after meeting with his United States counterpart in Jakarta. Prabowo Subianto also said Indonesia's planned purchase of F-15 fighter jets was in advanced stages and awaiting final sign-off from the government. And uh, our way of managing uh, possible... The meeting between United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Prabowo comes as the United States looks to strengthen its relations with countries in the region amid fears over Beijing's growing military presence and possible conflict over Taiwan. So, uh, I think this platform brings a lot if uh, the leadership decides to, uh, to go that route. China said it is open to a meeting with Austin on the sidelines of a security forum in Cambodia in a sign of towing relations after the country's top leaders met. Austin and Chinese Defense Minister Wei Fenghe will both be in Siem Reap, was attended as the Defense Ministerial Meeting. Thank you everyone for watching today's episode of Asia News. Have a nice weekend with loved ones. Stay safe and stay healthy. Cheers!